Kanata's work has already drawn the attention of some Christians, particularly his 2019 song, Things Fall Apart, for reasons which shall become evident. The immediate titular reference, Things Fall Apart, is to Nigerian Chinua Achibe's landmark Igbo novel of the same name, to which Kanata was likely exposed during the course of his Ghanaian education. Achibe's work is about the collapse of the Igbo world in the face of confrontation with the new Christian God introduced by the missionaries. Yet Kanata's song has a further connection to Irish, to Irishman W.B. Yeats' apocalyptic poem, The Second Coming, from which Achibe himself drew inspiration. The first lines of Yeats's poem reads, and I quote, turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. In Yeats's metaphor, the falcon is a speaker or a human, and the falconer is God. And the poem itself is about the chaotic times where it seems God has left. A chaos that ensues because in Yeats' words, the best lack all conviction while the West are full of passionate intensity. I shall return to this idea later in the lecture. Kanata's song, Things Fall Apart, builds upon and updates Yates and Atibe within a Ghanaian contextual frame through his use of the mother tongue refrain, Nyamisumpa Nalemisumiya. This is how we are worshiping God. A phrase that provides the lyrical and theological anchor for the entire song. Things fall apart as is characteristic of hip life draws on indigenous musical poetic traditions of allusion and satire to convey its message. Yet the music has a light, almost whimsical quality that belies the gravity of the subject matter treated by the song. The aforementioned refrain poses a rhetorical question to the listener, yet simultaneously Provides, as, uh, provides a commentary on the hypocrisy that runs through a highly religious Ghanaian society. His critique begins, as scripture says, in the house of God. In the first stanza of this song, he points out that the same people who attend Friday all-night services also attend the club on Saturday. He refers to the popular saying that the same ships that brought the Bible also brought the snubs, implying that this is the means by which people justify their false religiosity. After all, if the same ship that brought the Christian Bible also brought snubs, then the same person who attended church service can equally attend club activities or similar programs without offending God. Throughout the song, Kanata highlights various dimensions of this religious hypocrisy. However, he does not limit his concerns only to the church. But he speaks more broadly, indicting politicians for the dereliction of their duties and lecturers for giving passing marks in exchange for sexual favors. He mentions alcohol abuse among both Christians and Muslims, women who are stuck to other people's husbands, quote, like a plaster. Covetousness and greed that extends to an inordinate focus on prosperity preaching by pastors and the resort to blood rituals in the pursuit of material gain. Kanata asserts that unless God considers, heaven will be empty. To consider someone, particularly in Ghana, means to extend understanding or mercy to the person and therefore to suspend 
the judgment or punishment they deserve. It is a common plea heard in Ghana. Some of my students have asked me to consider them. And thus it is not unusual that it will find its way into these song lyrics. In this case, Kanata's lyrics point to the mercy of God, to the willingness of God to consider as the only possible remedy for the inevitability of divine judgment that would otherwise see no one qualify for heaven. This recalls for us the primal sense of human finitude and weakness and the consequent need for the intervention of a superior spiritual power and of relationship with that power and the reality of the afterlife. The same sense of finitude and plea for divine intervention is evident in Kanata's 2017 hit song, Confession. And as an aside, this was the first song that actually captured my attention because I was on sabbatical that year and I would go every day to train at the gym and they would be playing it. And if you've ever heard the song Confession, it's quite catchy, even if you don't understand the lyrics. So the 27 hit song Confession. As does most of his song, Confession uses a combination of fancy chi and pigeon. It has a catchy tune and uses a memorable refrain. Aradi badges dinner. Aha. Which translates, Jesus take the wheel. Jesus take the wheel is, of course, the title of a famous Christian country song performed by Carrie Underwood and released in 2005. And it is possible that Kanata borrowed the phrase and at least some of the concept from Underwood's song, though recontextualized for the Ghanaian situation. The song takes as its major theme a warning against drunk driving. Yet the song has a significant theological subtext of human weakness and the need for divine intervention. The first verse of the song talks about the unpleasant dilemma faced by those who are drunk when they have to find their way home at the end of the night. But then verse 2 opens with a direct reference to scripture. Specifically, through paraphrasing the Pauline dilemma captured in Romans chapter 7 verse 19, I do not do the good that I want to do, but the evil I do not want to, this I keep on doing. And then it's followed by a reference to Matthew 26, 41. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Given Kanata's background as the son of a pastor who is often recalled memorizing scripture during family devotions, it's unsurprising that scripture would find its way readily into his music. Kanata uses this phrase to anchor his plea for divine intervention and mercy. Hey. I wrote this down, but I can't remember how to say it. Manche maye o erade. Manche ma maye o erade. Who can read this for me? I want to get it right. Bruh. Read this fancy phrase for me. Because I want to say it correctly so you understand what it is saying. Thank you. This phrase mirrors and paraphrases the psalmist in Psalm 25, verse 7. Do not look at what I've done, Lord. No, Manche, Mamayo. Manche, Mamayo. Aha, that's why I couldn't remember it. There is an implicit sense of disgrace and shame that extends beyond the immediate circumstance of drunkenness. And the subsequent lines assert that without God's intervention, the writer may not make it home. Home has two meanings here. 
The first is within the immediate context of the song and refers to the drunken driver's need to return to his physical home. But the larger theological reference is to a spiritual home, that is, a return to God. Yet, God is angry. Or, as the lyrics captures, he says he knows God has boiled up. If you listen very carefully, he said he knows God has boiled up. It's a pigeon expression that graphically captures the sense of God's anger. Because of his anger, the writer shifts to a more personable, personal and arguably more humble tone in the second verse. The term daddy appears as a substitute for erade. God is not now presented as a distant figure to the writer, but is now referred to in intimate, familial terms that accord more closely with the concept of home. God is not described as an abstraction, but as a family member. And as he continues, the lostness and embarrassment of his state becomes more and more apparent. He begins to doubt his capacity to even recognize the correct path home and says that God can take over the car because the wind that is coming, at the speed he's going, the wind is so great, God can take over the car. This can be read as an oblique reference to the spirit, symbolized by the wind, taking over the life of the writer, metaphorically, the car, so that he can arrive safely home. It is the language of surrender to God in light of one's inability to steer one's life well. Yet, despite this language of surrender and plea for God's intervention in the second verse, the final verse finds the writer once again intoxicated, having skipped a church to meet his friends at Sakumono. He metaphorically compares his lack of interest in church to the relationship between the music duo Mensa and One Love Kublo, a reference that would speak with clarity to his predominant audience. But this verse ends on a despairing note. He says he has gotten stuck. He tries to reverse the car, metaphorically speaking, his life, without looking, without guidance. He has mistaken the road signs, and he has passed the red light. This is a picture of despair. And significantly, there is no plea for God's intervention in the third verse. The writer seems to have abandoned any hope for change and resigned himself to continuing on the wrong path. Now, there is far more work to be done, particularly on my reading of Fancy. But I would like to share some concluding observations. It is interesting to note that nowhere in the songs I have thus far reviewed does the name Jesus appear, though the songs use a broadly Christian framework. And this is not due to any particular aversion to the use of Christian terminology, as he frequently employs Christian terminology in his music. And I have yet to discover the reasons for this. It may be a reflection of the need to appeal to a broader audience, including Muslims, for whom explicit reference to Jesus might be off-putting, but general references to God or even to Christ might be more acceptable. Theologically, however, it indicates that God the Father has a more prominent place in the theology reflected in the songs I have thus far reviewed than the person of Jesus Christ. Christ is mentioned most prominently in Things Fall Apart, but even there, mentioned only incidentally. The major focus is on God, the Father. I note here also that though the music used in his songs is generally light in keeping with the genre, sin is consistently portrayed as a weighty matter that attracts the judgment of God. In light of that impending judgment, only God's consideration will make a difference. Sin, in this theology, is also encapsulated in actions and, in particular, social vices that leads to estrangement from God. 
And this gives Kanata's music a moralistic tenor, despite the consistent emphasis on God's mercy. There is more that can be gleaned, but this is, as I said, only a preliminary glimpse through the glass of one contemporary musical artist. Cressy Dixon likely did not have hip life music in mind when he said everyone theologizes. Nevertheless, the artists whose music resounds in the dance halls and parties of Africa are not excluded. They are part of the rich tapestry of African culture. And culture, as Andrew Walls reminds us, is the workplace of Christian theology. Culture is not restricted to the solemn of Christian communities, nor confined to those only with explicitly Christian commitments. Kwame Beriako has taught us that theology comes from where faith lives and reflects faith in the living God as a present reality in daily life. That faith is often evinced in unexpected ways, but that does not invalidate the theological insights that emerge as through a glass darkly. Thank you.